That fella you see getting off that airplane is probably the hardest-headed man in Minnesota, maybe even North America. He's Ron Weber, and the good-looking fella shaking hands with him is me, Bill Grayshock. We're both in the fish and tackle business, and we're both crazy about going fishing. Now, Ron's what you'd call an expert fisherman, and he's fished salt and fresh water all over the world. But when I invited Ron to meet me, I promised him the fishing trip of his life. Salt water, light tackle, light line, and some heavy fish. Well, as you might expect, Ron wasn't too impressed. Fact is, he informed me that he'd already been on the fishing trip of his life down in South America a few years back. And he said he didn't figure I could come up with any surprises after what he'd already done for himself. Now, you'd figure I'd withdraw my invitation at that point. But there was a challenge in it. And, well, there's some things so good, you just gotta share them. Besides, I'd gone to some trouble getting my boat nearly a thousand miles south of civilization. I had found the perfect spot to test everything Ron and I knew about fishing and fishing tackle. I had to share it. I had to share the whole incredible experience of Baja, Mexico. In the good Lord's grand design of things, Baja Peninsula seems to have been intended for fishermen and nobody else. It's a beautiful 800-mile ridge, probing like a bony finger out into the deep blue waters of the Pacific. And everything on the peninsula seems designed to complement the sportsman's experiences on the water. In Baja, you have the justifiable conviction that you've left civilization far behind but right here on the southernmost tip of the peninsula are luxury hotel accommodations like the peninsula itself designed for the comfort and convenience of the fisher. What kind of tackle are we going to use? I know we're going light tackle. What kind of rods and reels are we going to use? Well, Ron, uh, what I'd like to do, this, this fishing down here is kind of field testing for us, you know. Sure. We're actually going to be using tackle a, lot, a little lighter than you'd normally use for this type of fish. But I'd like to use these uh, revolving spool champion reels here for uh, dolphin, wahoo, uh, some of the rock type fish along the beaches here, maybe rooster fish. I've used that champion, it's really got a smooth drag so it, it should hold the fish well. Yeah, you, you need a smooth drag for this fish because these fish will run and run hard on you. Well, Phil, you say you were l using lighter tackle than you'd normally use, but isn't that adding a new dimension to the sport? Uh, don't you have a lot more fun with these fish if they're on light tackle? Oh, of course. I mean, I don't think the idea is to see how many fish we can catch, but mainly just how much we can enjoy it and give the fish a good chance, and right. uh, we'll have some fun. This bigger uh, spinning reel here, this would be good for sailfish. We'll fish mm -hmm. with sail for sailfish with this. We're both uh, for casting and trolling both. Yeah. That ought to be fine for wahoo or oh, yeah. dolphin or any of those yeah. fish, too. That'll what, work fine for that. What uh, test line are you going to be using on that spinning reel? I'd like to use 20 pound down here and maybe 15. 20 and 15 on the spinning, on the right. champion you use? On the champion uh, reels, I think we'll use the 12 pound test. Phil, you've uh, done a lot of fishing with artificial lures down here. I've had some experience in salt water, and I've done very well with these rapala style lures. For example, this countdown, uh, this runs about 8 to 10 feet deep and it can be speed trolled. Do you think this will be a good lure for uh, the fish down here? Yeah, it'll be excellent. I know I've, excellent. Pr I've produced wahoo in other waters with it, and of course, the uh, dolphin hit it well too. So I would think we can use that uh, very nicely with the light tackle that you, you propose we use. Yeah. What yeah. about colors? Uh, the natural bait fish color is good, but surprisingly, this bright fluorescent uh, red-orange has really produced well for me down in Panama and other areas. You think that would produce here too equally as well? Yeah, in, in past years, uh, Ron, this uh, red rapala has really been, I think, our number one fish catcher down here. Is that right? Yeah, we've really done excellent with it. I've got a funny little deal here. I cut the regular floating rapala, I cut the lip way back on it, and I use this for a skip bait, 
And uh, I take Wahoo, and I've taken some billfish on it, too. I'm anxious to try it down here to see if it produces. Well, I, I know the dolphin and the Wahoo will go for that bait, just yeah. the way you've got it rigged. That ought to be fun. And we've got a, another color that uh, we've developed. This is a uh, very lifelike looking color. It's a uh, mackerel finish. I imagine it'll be mostly trolling. Yeah, what we'll do, Ron, uh, what I'd like to do is, you see these rock, these land uh, uh, masses that come out here, uh, these headlands all along here, they all have reefs running out mm -hmm. under the water. Anywhere from uh, oh, three fathoms on out to 60 fathoms. And uh, we'll catch uh, a lot of different types of fish in there. And then on those sandy stretches you see, see along mm -hmm. there, you'll have your rooster fish. Yeah. Uh, in past years, I've had excellent luck with this type of lure on the rooster fish. And the smaller lure here, I've done surprisingly well on the Cabrilla and the uh, Sierra and that yeah. type of fish. One thing that I found about these lures, they track very straight, even at a fast troll, so you can speed troll them. So I think that's going to be very important for this type of fishing. Yeah, another thing too, Ron, we have to uh, set our drags light. You don't want yes. too much drag here because these fish hit so fast, so hard and run so fast, you know, that uh, you want a nice, fairly light drag so they can really run off the line, and then you can set down later and bring them in. Yeah, that reef extends out anywhere from one to three miles. From that it's the next morning, and for Baja, it's a fairly typical December morning. Warm and sunny, with a 100% chance of more of the same. We're up early, and my old friend Ron is having trouble concealing some enthusiasm that keeps popping up. Miguel, the beach boy, ferries us out to my boat which is sitting pretty on a crystal blue Gulf of California water. Miguel and I strike a bargain over some of my gear that needs cleaning, and while we normally release all the fish we catch, I end up promising to bring him a special fish or two, something his whole family can enjoy eating. Well, let's get going. Let's go. We're gonna start out the day on the Gulf side of the peninsula. The 800 mile long Gulf is 70 to 200 miles wide and it's sometimes called the Sea of Cortez. That's because the late Mr. Cortez sailed to Baja in 1535 looking for black pearls and gold. Well, he didn't find what he was looking for, and he just plain overlooked the fact that Baja promised in a few hundred years to be the sports fishing capital of the world. Mr. Cortez never would have made it in the fishing tackle business, I can tell you that. Oh, Cortez did found the town of La Paz, which is now the capital of Baja, California South. Speaking of south, we're well into it. We're down about 23 degrees latitude, and like I said, right on the end of the peninsula. We can move from the calm, sheltered waters of the Gulf into the open Pacific in a matter of minutes. We'll loosen up in the Gulf and sample the incredible variety of critters that show up at the other end of the Baja fishing rod. And speaking of incredible critters, Ron hasn't budged from the conviction that I'm pulling his leg a little bit. He still figures he's seen it all. He's been wrestling those northern muskies since he can remember, so I know he loves a good fight. I just hope he likes surprises, because these waters are full of them. Well, it looks like the host is going to have to sit down to the table first. Ron pulls his line out of the way, and I dig in. There he is, whatever it is. It's a fine specimen of dolphin. He'll weigh about 18, 20 pounds, and he'd make a fair trophy if I didn't already have one. Got a dolphin here, Phil. Yeah. Nice fish. Yeah, a lot of times they'll come in and two or three or a little school followed in. We just keep casting. He keep casting while I'm fighting this. We might come up with another one. These dolphins sure give you a show. Aerial acrobatics. Are they your favorite? I can't tell. I, I think he's a my great favorite. sports fish, sometimes called a dorado, why. and always known for his brilliant and changeable colors. In the water or out, he puts on a colorful show. Dolphins like warm water, really and they spend a lot of time near the surface. My dolphin isn't what Miguel had in mind, so he's set free. Well, Ron doesn't have one, and he's determined to do some serious fishing. 
and Ron's free to do what he can with one of his brand new lures he just threw in the Gulf. Trolling. Down here, it's minutes of waiting, followed by seconds of pure panic. Uh-oh, those frigate birds are a good sign that something's up. We'd better troll this area extra carefully. Pay dirt. Ron's got himself attached to a big, deep runner that's really spilling line off. I'll get him cleared for action. Using 12-pound line on light tackle makes it necessary to use the boat as part of your tactics. I do what I can to help, and I ride old Ron a little bit about those freshwater sissy fish he's been accustomed to. Get around here, go back on my side of the cord. I can't. Hold this rod a second. Hey, babe. Get the head back. Somebody stand on my cord. The birds we saw tipped us that bait fish were near the surface, and that tipped us that there was probably something bigger under the bait fish, making them want to climb out of the water. We were right. Whatever it is, it's a fighter. Yahoo! Ron's getting impatient to see what's on the other end of the line. Anywhere else on earth you could probably guess, but not at Baja. It's big, and it's a wahoo. No wonder he was so fast. Wahoos are deep water fish that love a fast swimming lure and move like silver bullets. They average around 40 pounds, but the record is way over 100. This is the feast Miguel had in mind, and it's the kind of fish fight I had in mind for Ron. Well, it's time for a change of pace. We'll do a little casting number for you here. The calm gulf waters are perfect for it. We've got just the right tackle to make it worth doing. Casting while I'm fighting this, we might come up with another one. That's really something, isn't it? All in an area here of about a uh, mile and a half, two miles, just off from the beach. I've never seen such a variety of fish. In, in great weather, too. I thought for a while we were going to have a little blow today, but. They're flattened down and couldn't be more comfortable out here in the ocean. Ron scores oh, first. Naturally, rat. being an ex-charter boat captain, I'm looking out for my fisher. Nice I'll position the boat to give Ron a helping oh, hand and keep us off the rock. I can't really tell you what my favorite It's is. a trigger my fish. Trigger fish are named for a peculiar dorsal fin like shaped like a trigger. Lines. They're not very fast when it comes to swimming, but on light tackle, they make a nice catch. But you can forget putting them on the dinner table. Oh, it's up. not worth the effort. Oh, there you go. Speaking of eating, look yeah, at I those really teeth. Spoiled, Ron says they remind him of a piranha, something he's caught in South America. Well, I think it's time I caught some. Another trigger. One look around you and you can see why your geology professor talked about Mexico as having a crumpled landscape. 
The tops of the mountains just peek out of these waters, and the land mass is high, wrinkled, and dry. There isn't much of a continental shelf. The water drops off quickly to 100 fathoms and more. There he is. Oh, look at that fish. Oh, oh, Rod's baby. onto something, and it doesn't feel a bit like a trigger fish. Whatever we had here packs a big punch and has a distinctive fighting style. It's running too fast to be a tuna, but it's got real authority. How big do you think he is? Well, no wonder. Take a close look, friends, at that rooster comb sticking up out of the water like an angry warning. It's a rooster fish, something most fishermen will never live to see in action. When I first saw it, I thought that thought it was my fish coming up. It looked like it weighed about 800 pounds. It's all around here, all around here. Couldn't believe that back that came up. It was the porpoise that came right up where I thought my fish was going to be. Must have went about a foot away from the line. It's usually caught, when it's caught, on live bait. But Ron has hooked this prize winner on an artificial lure. The rooster fish is a spectacular specimen in the water and out. He's prized as a trophy and highly regarded for his fighting spirit and strength. He hits hard and runs fast. Can't get tight line on him. Sometimes a rooster fish will practically run up on the beach and try to throw your lure. Come on, baby. We go get you a couple more? Yeah, let's settle up and go get another one, huh? OK. Oh, that was great. That I was really good. enjoyed that, Phil. Well, I almost fell over the side there, too. My legs are so weak. <laughs> oh. Rooster fish travel fast in compact groups, and they're always found close to shore. The unique dorsal fin, shaped like a rooster comb, can be seen from a long distance. Some friends of ours see it and come over for a closer look. Oh, that cruise ship. Oh, that goes to Los Angeles. Los Angeles? Yeah, it cruises from Los Angeles, you know, from Puerto Vallarta and Acapulco. That doesn't go through the Panama. Now Ron's got taxidermy on his mind for this perfect mounting size rooster. And I think he's slipping into the first happy stage of Baja fever. After all, if a rooster fish can't do it, nothing can. We're moving down to the point, down to the southernmost tip of Baja. We'll troll along the way just to keep things interesting. And then we well, it's my then turn to do some real. reeling. This is real muscle and a little bit of a surprise. It's not the most That's likely the time of year, but it looks like I've got me a fine yellowfin tuna know. and some good white meat eaten from a little buddy Miguel. Now. The yellowfin is fond of warm water, and he often stays near the surface. In this part of the world, those shimmering the beauties may reach 450 pounds. That Adult yellowfins are unmistakable because of the unusually long second dorsal and anal fins. They're school fish, and they like to hit fast-running lures. But Ron, as the old fella said, you ain't seen nothing yet. The dolphin, wahoo, trigger fish, tuna, and even the spunky rooster fish were warm-ups. We're checking in, and we're checking out for the wild blue Pacific. In this part of the world, you can go from casting to wild and woolly deep sea fishing in a matter of minutes. And in our case, we don't plan to change anything but the water. We'll stick to the 15-pound monofilament on the open face spinning wheel and the 12-pound test on the level wine champion wheels. I'll tell Ron not to drop a line on the way because I'm tired of catching small fry. Ron isn't talking much. I think the man from Minnesota may be in shock. There's the lighthouse. We're on our way. The rock formations you saw are the tips of giant ridges under the water. They drop steeply to the dark floor of the ocean, making it possible to do some real big game fishing with an easy side of land. Porpoises. Now that's a mighty fine sign. They share the same menu with sailfish, mullet, sardines, mackerel, and squid. 
And while sails aren't too compatible with porpoises, we figure it's worth checking out. The birds give us added assurance that bait fish are plentiful. We start working the area pretty carefully. Ron drops our first offering and we begin our sailfish patrol. And the honest truth is, by this time, we're both figuring it can't happen anyway. Not after all the fish we've already caught, and not on light tackle. We keep within sight of the porpoises. They're obviously feeding. There's only one reason for these birds to be here, and it ain't porpoise watching. We both know good and well we got no right to hope. But we both hope anyway. In fact, it's more than hope now. It's a kind of prickly feeling down our backs. It's, ah, uh, you know what I mean. There's something behind the bait. It's a sailfish, but it's not a strike, exactly. See, sails sometimes hit once to stun their victims and come back the second time to strike in earnest. At least sometimes they come back. You just have to wait and see. And wait. And wait. And wait some more. And... See? A strike! Now, friends, comes the part of the story you would not believe if it weren't recorded on film. I hook another sail. Two sails at the same time on light tackle in a little boat. The only thing to do is get on opposite ends of the boat and try to stay away from each other. If our lines even touch, they break. These Pacific sailfish average around 100 pounds, but the record is way over 200 pounds. We've got our hooks into two fine specimens. There's no denying that. And there's no denying that there's nobody to drive the boat. It's a contest of men and tackle against a couple of fish who figure they are superior. puts his sail into a holding path while I try to land mine on the starboard side of the boat. Jumping. I'm jumping. Jumping. 
I don't intend to bring him on board. That would kill him. I'll just try to cut the leader close to the fish's mouth, which counts for a fair catch, and let him go. Ron brings his opponent around for the first real close look and his first big decision of the day. I turn my sail loose because I've caught other sails. Ron is tempted to boat his for another fine mount. Back down just a little bit. In that, that direction, I, I'm not taking mine at all. Well, how do you explain it? Ron decided to set his sail free too. We give him a send-off and our thanks for a truly memorable experience. You know, to catch a wahoo is a treat. To catch a rooster fish is a privilege. But to catch two sailfish at the same time and be able to prove it is just more than a man has a right to ask. Ron tries to thank me, but words fail him, and I shrug it off. Well, that's Baja, Mexico. It's the same, and yet it's different for every man who visits here. And every man who visits here has a fishing story to tell, a true story with a beautiful ending. Baja, Baja fever. Well, Phil, we got another great day today. The weather's just perfect. Oh, it's just been beautiful this week, Tom. I just uh, enjoy coming down here so much because it, you know, it relaxes you so much. I'll tell you, this, this fishing's been terrific. You know, I think we've caught practically every kind of fish there is to catch down on the Baja. Yeah. Uh, we've caught the sails and we've caught the roosters and the wahoo and everything. What's there left to catch? Well, how'd you like a marlin today? Oh, would I love a marlin. You know a good spot for a marlin? I know the best place for a marlin on the coast. Let's go.